Hey everybody, and welcome to Cleaning Up History, where my goal is preservation of headstones and cemeteries while telling forgotten stories of the past. Warning, this video may contain adult content and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. So today I want to talk a little bit about the Stout family of La Follette and particularly Robert Stout and his family from the early 1900s. Um, I came across Robert's headstone and it got my curiosity piqued. My initial thought was, wow, look at all these pretty flowers on this stone. Someone spent a lot of money on it. And then I, I, I realized... Um, that there are actually symbolic meanings behind different um, designs as this on headstones back then. And what um, a flower in full bloom on a headstone normally symbolizes is that that, that individual died during the prime of their life. And then I looked even closer at Robert's headstone and it actually had the word killed before his date of death and that's a little that's a little unusual and unique you don't normally see that it specifically said killed on it and um i couldn't really find anything to start with i've actually been working on these stones and uh research on this this individual story for about a month now. Um, the stones were really, really bad. Caked with uh, biological growth, you can see later on in the video. So, um, after initially checking out Robert Stout's stone, I realized that his wife is buried beside him. And then on the um, left side of her... There was another stone that appeared to be, appeared to have the in inscriptions completely worn off of them. But I had my suspicions that it belonged to that family as well. So, as you see later in the video, after I started cleaning that stone, I, I was correct. It was, um, it was part of this family also. And these, uh, four-sided stones back in the eight late 1800s and early 1900s they were normally used at a family plot and they would have an individual's information on each side of the stone what i do know about robert stout is that he was born around 1855 and in the 1900 census, they lived, um, Robert lived in Campbell County, Tennessee, with his wife, Mary L., who was 33, his daughter, Lou Lula, who was 12, his son, Willie, who was 8, his son, Rennie, which may have been a typo, it may be Ronnie, who was 5, and his son, Robert, who was one. And I can't find them in the 1910 census. But as you can see, by that time, Mary had already passed away. I'm not sure really what happened to her. I found her obituary and it just states that she died in her home in La Follette. But, um, unfortunately, this other stone here on the left that I assumed was part of their family, it was. And when I got, when I started cleaning that stone, one side of the stone has information for Robert. And the other has information for Willie or William, which was Robert's two sons. And they died at a really early age. I think Robert was around three or four years old. 
and Willie was somewhere around 10 years old. I, I don't know what happened to these children. It's really sad that that they were that young when they passed away. And then it was about five years later that that Mary passed away. And then it was about three years after Mary's death that this incident occurred with Robert. And I also found that uh, it looks like Mary and Robert were married around 1887. So, from what I can find um, in the newspaper articles, basically was that Robert Stout was shot multiple times by a man by the name of Blaine Myers and it happened on Tennessee Avenue in 1912. According to the articles, um, Robert and Blaine had ill feelings towards one another and that it had been going on for quite some time in regards to a debt. I'm not sure if it was Robert's debt or Blaine's debt, but looking at the events in Robert's life, he, he had apparently a series of unfortunate events that happened I, I don't know what all um this family went through but they lost two young children and he lost his wife within you know a short time span and he was listed as a farmer so you know probably financially he was struggling as well this is just my guess so, I'm assuming that the debt in question was Robert's, but I've not looked that much into the Myers family. But, um, according to all these articles, the men had ill feelings toward each other, and um, they had both been going armed any time they went out in case they ran into each other. And on that particular day, according to the newspaper articles... Uh, Robert and Blaine saw each other on Tennessee Avenue. Robert had his son with him, who was 18 years old at the time. Um, Blaine saw Robert reach for his gun, at which point Blaine pulled his gun and fired multiple times, killing Robert. Um, another thing I noted on Robert's stone is if you notice on the top of his stone, there is three links of a chain um, that is also a, um, a a symbol for uh, the fact that Robert was a member of the Odd Fellows the three le links of the chain that you'll sometimes see on headstones it um, represents it represents the fraternal order of odd fellows and the three links represent love, friendship, and truth. That's what each link represents. I don't know a whole lot about the um the odd fellows, but it's just basically a charitable group from what I understand. It was formed sometime in the eighteen hundreds and and their goal was was to be charitable and help people. Um, I'm assuming that at the time of this event, the 18-year-old son that was with Robert was the one that's listed in the 1900 census as Rennie or Ronnie. And I can't find what happened to him after that. I've not been able to track him down. I've been working on these stones for quite some time. Um... Robert Stone has all these little um, nooks and crannies that I'm literally cleaning all the moss out from under with toothpicks and small objects that I can get underneath without damaging any of the details. So, it's going to take me a little while to get done with this. I just want to make sure that I preserve Robert's history as well. So, I'm not completely done with this, this particular project, and I'm going to continue working on it when, when weather and time permits me to do so.
And I've done a um, couple of cleanings on Robert's. And then I started working on his family's as well. And I've done the initial cleaning on those. But I'm going to have to... I'm still... I still have my work to do on Robert Stout's family's grave sites. Uh, they've been neglected for quite some years, it, it looks like. Um, I don't know if there are any descendants of Robert Stout left in this area. Like I said, I can only, from what I can tell, he only had one son left. And in 1912, he was uh, 18 years old. There was a daughter as well. I didn't really follow up on where she went or who she married or anything like that. But Robert, Robert Stout's family seemed to fall upon many unfortunate events in the early 1900s. Um, the death of two of their young children followed by the death of his wife who would have just been in, in her early 40s at the time. And then Robert and his uh, dispute with Blaine Myers which ended up in his death in 1912. Um... The three articles that I found on the events that happened on Tennessee Avenue, one was the Knoxville Sentinel, published 11-25-1912. One was the Chattanooga Times, published 11-25-1912. And one was a paper in Memphis. It was published the same day, 11-25-12. And it looks like Mr. Myers, at the time of this shooting, he was around 32 years old. Mr. Mer Myers was married um, to Maggie Snow. He was the son of Archibald Myers and Nancy Cross, or sorry, not Nancy, Nanny Cross Myers. And he's buried in Sharp Cemetery Number 3. That's up um, near the golf course. And I plan on um, visiting that cemetery in the future, too. But you can learn a lot by the symbols on headstones. Um, the children's stones over on the far left, they have, you know, Williams on one side and uh, Roberts on the other. And then there is a flower in full bloom. Um, after I got some of the moss cleaned off, I could find it. it. It's on one side of the stone. And then on the other is the inscription that my father has many mansions. And on Robert's stone with all these detailed flowers, which are in full bloom, indicating that, you know, he died in the prime of his life. He was 55 years old at this time. And the um, symbol for the odd fellows and the fact that it says right on his headstone he was killed that's that's a little unique you don't see that very often and then on mary stone she's it of course states right on her headstone that she was the wife of robert and um I haven't got all the way down to the details on her stone yet, but I, it, it it appears like there's a dove um, on the top of hers. So that is the story of uh, the Robert Stout family. Um, it's an unfortunate story. But that's the events that, that led to Mr. Stout's death. So again, if you like the content of my videos... And, um, you want to see more, I'm going to have a lot more videos to come. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. And, um, if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.